Daniel chapter 6 verses 1 through 3. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Daniel was a godly and capable leader because his first allegiance was to his heavenly king. He was basically serving God rather than human rulers. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. King Darius had the wisdom to appoint Daniel as one of the top three administrators, and Daniel proved to be so excellent that the king intended to appoint him as ruler of the entire country. Daniel chapter 6, verses 4 through 5. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, We will never find any basis for charges against this man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. However, neither Daniel nor the king foresaw what was in store for this dedicated kingdom man. Daniel's steadfastness instilled jealousy among the other government officials. They despised him because he was excellent, not because he was evil. This is a common reaction of the evil toward the pious. Cain slew Abel for what reason? Because Cain's deeds were bad, where his brothers were righteous. 1 John chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. The officials tried to establish a charge against Daniel, but he had been in the Babylonian administration for about 40 years at this point, and his ethical record was impeccable. So what was the backup plan? They attempted to uncover something against him in relation to the law of his God. Consider yourself fortunate if the only thing your adversaries can say about you is that you are too devoted to God. Daniel chapter 6, verses 6 through 9. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, May King Darius live forever. Royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered, in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decree in writing. It's fascinating that Daniel's life had been such a consistent testimony to his faith in God that these officials were obviously aware of his prayer regimen. It was a wonderful plan since it played on the king's vanity. They basically said, Your Majesty, we think it would be a fantastic idea for you to declare yourself God for a month with all prayers dedicated to you. When Darius signed the written order, it became unreversible law. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Daniel did not let his adversaries down. They knew he'd be faithful to his God, and he was. Daniel did not make a huge production out of his objection to the unjust edict, nor did he flaunt his prayers. He merely returned home and prayed, his windows open toward Jerusalem, like he had done previously. No worldly mandate could keep him from carrying out his divine responsibilities. His outlook was similar to that of the apostles many years later. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. Daniel's faith was unwavering. Daniel chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. 
Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, The decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, and to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God whom you serve continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. Daniel's accusers were cowardly plotters, but they had the mighty law of the Medes and Persians on their side. When they told the king about Daniel, the king understood he'd been set up. He tried everything he could to set Daniel free, but he couldn't break his own law. He'd been misled into having his best administrator executed. Beaten, Darius had Daniel thrown into the lion's den. Then he fasted for a sleepless night. Like Nebuchadnezzar, Darius even paid homage to the true God and declared to the prisoner, May your God, whom you continually serve, rescue you. A pagan king, who had never worshipped the Lord before, was suddenly extolling him in the hopes that he would free his servant. Daniel chapter 6, verses 19-22 through 22. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Nobody was happier about Daniel's survival than King Darius the next morning. He definitely knew that Daniel's God was not like the gods of wood and stone after witnessing the miracle. Daniel's God would not be trifled with. Daniel replied that because he was innocent, God's angel had shut the lion's mouths. Then Daniel reminded the king, Before you, I have done no harm, effectively declaring, Your majesty, the only thing I was guilty of was being devoted to my God. Daniel chapter 6 verses 23 through 28. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Darius was relieved to get Daniel out of the den, and he unloaded his rage on the men who had falsely implicated Daniel. His terrible execution was characteristic of monarch's retribution in the ancient world. 
Darius's proclamation recognizing the true God is a theological jewel that may have been written by one of the psalmists. This Gentile ruler, like Nebuchadnezzar before him, prays the living God who rescues and delivers and whose kingdom will never be destroyed. Although the Jewish people were in exile, God had not abandoned them. In fact, he was eager to receive praise from their captors. Thus, Daniel prospered under Gentile rulers, serving as a message to Jewish readers of his book to remain faithful to God while Israel was under Gentile dominion. It's here that we see the first of four key lessons we can learn from Daniel. One, God was the central aspect of Daniel's life. We learn that part of his daily regimen was to kneel in front of Jerusalem and pray to God three times a day. Of course, this is why he was thrown into the lion's den. As stated in point number one, nothing was more important to Daniel than God. Daniel's entire existence centered around God. Christians in the modern era can learn from this example. Many people have heard the analogy of a bicycle wheel. For far too many Christians, God is merely another spoke rather than the core portion around which all the spokes revolve. This was not the case with Daniel, and it should not be the case with us today in our Christian lives. Unfortunately, it is all too easy for God to slip from our minds for the majority of the day. When we pray before a meal or sit through a Bible lecture, He may simply enter our minds every now and again. This is not how we should regard someone whose amazing grace rescues us on a daily basis. We are to love God with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. Don't reduce God to just being a part of your life. As demonstrated by Daniel's life, he must be the focal point of your life around which everything else revolves. Number two, Daniel used his influence. Every day as Christians, we are influenced by a great deal. Some are negative, while others are good. As a result, we have the ability to influence others. Unfortunately, many Christians do not use their influence to further God's kingdom. It all begins with an example. If people cannot tell Christians differently from the rest of the world, we have failed to take the first crucial step. Take a peek at Daniel. After seeing Daniel saved from the lions, King Darius rules that no one should worship anybody but the God of Daniel. Daniel once again used his influence in a very positive and powerful way. Number three, Daniel didn't waver when hardships arose. The Bible makes it abundantly plain that if we follow Christ as we should, we will face persecution, John chapter 15, verse 20. It is critical that we should not capitulate or yield to the enemy's advances. We are to put on God's full armor so that we might repel the evil one's fire arrows. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, NIV. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Our primary goal, like Daniel's, should be whether or not we are serving and honoring God. Many lessons may be drawn from Daniel's life that go far beyond his being thrown into a lion's den. He was a God-fearing servant who did not waver or compromise when adversity arose. He prioritized God in his life, and he was rewarded for it. Many of Daniel's concepts can be applied to our lives today. I encourage you to think on Daniel's continuous examples of devoted servitude to God rather than just the picture of a guy sitting with lions the next time you hear his name. The Bible also tells of a woman that stood up to unwavering pressure. Her name is Esther. To watch her video, click here. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.